Hi, I'm Angela Fair. First thing you're going to learn about me is that I love watercolor. Unless you see me at a restaurant, in which case the, probably the first thing you'll learn about me is that I really love cheese. Uh, but anyhow, uh, here we are in my studio talking about watercolor and I wanted to open up with you this box that I received in the mail from, uh, well, that's all a surprise. Uh, I have this package that I need to open and I'm excited to break into it because there's something in here that's really special and I'm really excited about. First though, I have to clear a space on my studio table so that we can uh, cut it open and uh, see what's inside. So I'm going to tidy up the studio and as fast as I can and then we're gonna come back and open up this great big beautiful box. I don't even know where to start. I keep my reference photos in this little orange vintage suitcase. This is usually as far as I get before I kind of give up because cleaning the studio is a complicated matter. Figuring out which paintings to keep and which ones need to be finished and where to put them and which ones are kind of good and they can use them for teaching purposes so they should be put somewhere else. Oh, we just want to open the package. Okay, that's gonna do it. We're gonna just get to it and open this package already. My husband says, and it is our anniversary today, so I should be quoting Wade, uh, that if you don't want to get bloody, then you should cut toward your buddy, which isn't very thoughtful of the buddy, but it is the acronym he's used to so far keep our kids from get, having to get stitches. Oh yeah. So this package came to me from Illinois. And you can see how precious the contents are by how carefully it was packaged. Okay, so I think we're down to one layer. So before we do that last layer, open it up, uh, I just want to tell you a story uh, of what, what I'm opening here. As a watercolor artist, I follow a lot of other watercolor artists for various reasons. Some I just really love their work, some I love their marketing, uh, others are different enough from me that I'm inspired to try new things because I see what they're trying. And I, at least a year ago, I started following Illinois artist Steve Putrich. And Steve does, uh, just stop the video, pause, go check him out. He does beautiful watercolor paintings and he is also a watercolor instructor. So if you're in the Illinois area, do take a look and see uh, if he's teaching any watercolor workshops near you. So right before Christmas, Steve posted a painting on his Facebook page and it just instantly connected with me. And I know you've had that experience with art that you've seen something that instantly connects with you and feels you know, like it was made for you or just you feel really a deep connection with the painting. I know I'm saying connection too often. Uh, so I saw this painting and I instantly just knew, I just loved it. And so I looked at it for a second, I loved it. I looked at it again, I, listened, I read the description, and then I messaged Steve and asked him if his painting was for sale. And I was a little bit, well, I felt a little silly emailing him because I don't spend a lot of money on art, and I rarely buy paintings, and I really shouldn't be buying paintings because I have a studio full, and you just saw me clean up dozens of paintings. So, uh, but when, when you meet, make a connection with something, I don't think you always have to excuse it. I don't hold off buying shoes because I already have a pair. Uh, I have 20 pairs. I have 50 pairs. I don't know. Um, but you know, we, we look for that right thing for right now. And so I, I emailed Steve 
and I was just sure that he was going to give me a price that was all out of my price range, especially because the size of the painting was a little bit bigger than uh, what I ordinarily might think I can afford. And he emailed me back. Well, actually, first it was on Facebook Messenger, and you know, Facebook Messenger shows you your past conversations with that person. And so when I went and called that conversation up, what it brought up was uh, that I had had a conversation with Steve Putridge before, and I didn't remember, but exactly one year ago to the day, I had emailed Steve about a different painting he had posted uh, exactly a year ago. And it was just so funny to see that, that it was precisely a year that had passed since I had inquired about the first painting, which had not been available. And uh, so here I'm uh, messaging him again and hoping that maybe this painting is a price I could justify. And Steve is a wonderful uh, artist in marketing because he messaged me back right away. And you would not believe how rare that is when you ask an artist about a painting and they reply or they, and they never reply at all. And I have a whole rant about that, which I'll share with you in a bit. Um, so yeah, he messaged me back. The price was actually very reasonable, um, less than I thought. And I think that usually happens when you're inquiring about art uh, or when you're not inquiring about art, because I think we hold back because we think, oh, the painting is going to be way too much money. I can't afford that. Just ask, go ahead and do it because you might be surprised. Uh, artists very frequently undervalue their work. So Steve's undervaluing of his work was my advantage because this is the painting that uh, he that I inquired about and he sent it to me and I get to open it today. And the other thing he did, which I think is awesome, is he was pa he painted it on Shizen paper and I've never used that particular brand of watercolor paper. And because he knew I was a watercolor artist, he threw some paper in too. So I'm excited about that. We could call this a class on how to wrap and ship an unframed watercolor paintings. So much care and attention to detail uh, and security. There's no way I could drop this painting in the snow outside and it would have been just fine with all that tape and cardboard around it. So I like that. You ready to see it? Oh, they are always better than they look on Facebook. I can tell you that right now. Oh, I'm so excited. I think it's, oh, there we go. Yeah, double bagged. You know why I like this painting? He used my favorite color in it. Look at this. Oh, we're going to get it close and take a good look at this painting because it's beautiful. Okay, so before we look at the picture, I, I mentioned I have a rant and I'm gonna share it because it's really getting on my nerves. So I really try, when I see a painting that I connect with deeply, I wanna have it. I've tried to get past this mental block that I'm too poor to buy artwork, because it's not true. I think about what I spend on clothing and coffee and you know all these little extras and I can afford, I can justify a painting once in a while if I see something because I've started to learn what a painting adds to my life. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute as well. But something that's happened when I see a painting that I love, and especially this has been happening to me on Instagram from time to time, is I'll message the artist. I see the painting, it hits me right here, and I message the artist. I love that painting you just shared can you is it available for sale can you tell me a price and you know what happens absolutely nothing and this is awful this is the worst thing if you're an artist and you're trying to have a presence online and maybe you're represented by a gallery and you're really important and you don't need to sell on instagram and that's fine but when someone messages you about your painting if they love your painting enough to ask you personally about it in a message comments, whatever, but if they're d direct messaging you or sending you an email and you don't answer, that person will never ask again. And because there's this funny kind of shame that happens when you reach out to ask about a painting and you don't hear anything back. And I'm a professional artist and I felt that shame. I, I thought to myself, well, you know, who am I to ask for their special and important painting? Uh, obviously, they just didn't think I was good enough to own it. 
crazy, but that's what we think. We feel shamed when we ask, when we love a painting enough to ask, we want to buy it and we never hear back. It feels like we did something wrong. I'm not going to open myself up to that again. I'm not going to ask that artist about another painting if they post something in the future. And so they've ruined their chance of ever selling a painting to me, someone who connects deeply with their work, loves what they do. I still follow them on Instagram. I still love their art, but I'm afraid to ask because that feeling of shame that came with those crickets in response to my message. So if you're wanting to sell your work online and maybe you're never hearing from anybody may, and uh, maybe you don't get those messages, but if you're getting a message from time to time asking, please, no matter how busy you are, or if that painting's earmarked for a gallery, or maybe you think it's crap and you just don't want to sell it, please just reply. Say, oh, I'm so sorry, that painting's not available. Or you know, who are you to ask because I don't think you're worthy. <laughs> Nobody thinks that. As artists, I don't think that if someone asks about my art. Uh, if a painting's not available, I'm just going to tell you. And it's been become really important to me to really communicate that when I get a message. And you know, I'm not super great at Instagram, so sometimes I don't see those message requests you know, until maybe a month or two later, I'm getting better. But you know, in the beginning, it might be a long time. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I had a message request and I didn't know it. And they were asking about a painting. I'm still going to say, hey, I'm so sorry I didn't see your message. You know, that painting's not available or that painting's still available. I'm gonna reply. Uh, it's, it's, there's no time limit on just getting back to somebody. And when it's a purchase inquiry, it's really important. So make that uh, a, just something that's on your radar. And if you're asking about paintings and feeling ashamed when you don't hear an answer, uh, you don't have to get a hate on for that artist. They probably just haven't really thought about it from your perspective, but uh, it, you don't have to feel ashamed of it. Uh, that's the upshot. Uh, no artist is thinking, well, they are just not worthy of my great and wonderful art. Uh, and if they are, eh, yeah, they're not. <laughs> Anyhow, let's take a look at this painting a little bit closer. Let's take a look at this beautiful painting. Oh, I'm just so excited. This, how am I going to frame it? First of all, oh, it's just right to the edge. Beautiful, uh, beautiful work. And actually that painting right to the edge on this Shy Zen paper tells me that uh, Steve's not a paper stretcher. He's, uh, he has no holes for having stapled anything down. It's just right out to the edges and on this very textured handmade paper. And this very textured rough paper means that we have beautiful granulation settling into the hollows of the paper over here. Oh, I wonder what that color is over here. Uh, just really gorgeous. We have some gorgeous wet and wet in the background. Look at that beautiful pattern of distant trees. And we see the trees because he's carved out around those lighter negative shapes. Loving that. He's carved out shapes here with his brush, pulling up those trees, and that would have happened in those first layers. And then down below, we have this beautiful crispness of the shadows on the snow. We have warm and cool in this painting, and that pattern of warm and cool is really beautiful. You can see this path of blue that comes right across the painting from this corner right out to here. Even though this is a slightly different blue than what's in the center, it all kind of flows and yet it's not boring because it's broken up by this bright warm shape here, which is also kind of carries this continuity. We've got warmth and warmth here, these beautiful paths through the painting. He's got strong darks that create contrast and uh, he's not afraid to let color flow. You can see there's a little yellow glow even on the snow here. And that's not a bad thing. I think we often would panic and say, oh no, it's, we've got yellow bleeding out. But Steve knows that the objects that are uh, beside the snow might be reflecting color onto the snow, reflected light. We have some spatter and texture, and we've got some beautiful opaque colors. Um, one of my favorite watercolors to use is lavender right now, and you can see those little pops of lavender in here, and then some opaque little weeds that he's painted here and here in like a neutral um, 
I don't know if that's a raw sienna or a buff, titanium buff, uh, but really gorgeous. I don't have to know the color names to enjoy the painting. Uh, it's just kind of fun as an artist to kind of dissect what's happening on the painting just a little bit. We have, uh, again, that very strong pop of crisp dark right here in the center, uh, a little down from center uh, on the paper, which also gives us, actually, it's almost like this X-shaped uh, composition. Uh, maybe not. Um, very, lots of darks in the top two thirds and then that gorgeous white snow along the bottom. Uh, just a lot of beautiful things to enjoy. What I feel about painting, <laughs> paintings and why I buy paintings, uh, not just my own paintings because I can hang my own paintings all through the house, but I love hanging other artists work as well because there's a personal connection and there's this thought that happens when I look at a painting that doesn't happen when uh, you know, if I'm walking past my calendar and there's a pretty photo on the calendar for that uh, month, sure, I might enjoy that photo. But when I look at a painting, every single time I look at it, I can think about different aspects of the painting. Steve, at some point, decided to place those uh, little negative shapes in here. And he decided that this spatter of remaining white was going to stay. And how did he do that? Uh, how did he leave the whites in this area? Was it dry brush or did he use masking fluid? My mind gets to be occupied with those thoughts. Every time I look at this painting, something new is going to be drawn out. And I think that's this living aspect of creativity that um, you just, just is so much deeper than just here's a nice picture. There's a, a connection to that decision-making process and the creative spirit of the artist that uh, connects with our own spirits. And uh, that's why every artist should feel very honored when someone connects with their work, and enough to own it, I think, and to recognize that what, a, what an honor and what a profound gift that is to be able to connect to people in that way and to be able to receive that connection from the artist and yeah, the paintings that evoke a certain mood in me, they evoke that mood every time I look at them and it's really, really wonderful. So thank you, Steve Putridge, for this beautiful painting. Uh, Steve's work might not be your favorite thing. Uh, my work might not be your favorite thing, but if you have an artist that you love and resonate with, follow their art. Uh, ask them about a painting when they post it. Uh, maybe it's a little tiny one and you can just barely afford it. Or, uh, But it, even a small, <laughs> greeting size sized card painting can be really special a really special piece of original art and you very likely might find yourself becoming an art collector uh, with that very first original painting that you purchase so i really feel like owning and having original art on my walls helps me to slow down and savor the beautiful things in life so this is a little different than my usual video lessons. I'm not teaching you how to paint anything, but I felt like this was an important thing to share. My joy and excitement over owning this painting and the value of owning and connecting with original art. Life goes by so fast and most of my day is kind of the mundane. I'm home, I work from home, uh, I take care of my children, I make food, I clean the house, uh, you know, and I work and, and I work. and so in the moments in between are where I think the meaning is found. It's in, you know, those moments of laughter with my kids and it's in just pausing to enjoy a cup of coffee and look out the window and think about the day. It's in taking a walk with the dog. And when I have original art on my walls, I find meaning in that as well. I pause, I think about, I reflect on uh, the artist and their intention. I meditate on the, emotions that that painting makes me feel. It just helps me to slow down. Uh, instead of hustling through the house and doing my jobs, uh, I pause and I savor. And I don't think I could put a price tag on that, uh, but fortunately I get to uh, this, you know, I get to invest in some paintings that mean a lot to me. And for you, if you're buying art uh, for the first time, feel free to start small. There are many emerging artists that you can support. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars to, to invest in putting something beautiful on your wall to help you take those meaningful pauses in your day 
and uh, maybe lift your mood up just a little bit as well. I love art that uplifts. That's one of the things that I look for in a painting is that uh, it makes me feel a certain way and a way that I want to feel more often. And then when I have that painting on my wall, I put it in a place where when I'm walking past, I pause, I look at it, I feel, and, and then I continue on with my day and I get to take a little piece of that painting with me the way it made me feel. That's a pretty good reason to own art, don't you think? Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back very soon with more watercolor lessons. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, joining me on this little adventure, package opening and adventure. Uh, if you would love to own a painting of mine, and this isn't a sales pitch, but you know, uh, I have more than I know what to do with, and I would love to give you a price and know that my work has found a home in your heart. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.